Welcome to PD Pet Care Vlogs. I'm Dr. Kath Watson and today I've got joining me Dr. Meg Irvine. Meg is a veterinarian who has a passion for teaching veterinarians communication skills. And today we're going to talk about how to have difficult conversations. So first up, Meg, I'd like to ask about why is it so important to talk about money? Yeah, money's a really hard one and it's the bit about our job that we hate doing the most. Typically, if you ask any veterinarian, it'll be talking about money that they find hardest. Um, it's super important that we do talk about money though because the outcome of a case um, has a financial aspect to it. Um, so for example, um, I always like to think of a case uh, or a, um, a situation having um, the, the clinical um, and physical outcome for the pet and the, and the client. There's the emotional part of it. Did the client feel well taken care of and well respected? And then there's the, the financial part. Um, did, the, um, did they pay their bill? Were they well informed um, about the costs? So to get a good case outcome, we need to make sure that we've covered all three of those things. So having a client really well informed about the costs involved and, um, and feeling supported through that process is, is really important. So lots of veterinarians find it difficult to talk about money though, so mm. why? I think there's a whole um, huge number of factors that are involved in that. Um, it comes down to um, veterinarians typically finding it hard to value what they do um, and and I think there's a public perception that veterinary care should be um, on par with what they pay for their own, um, what humans pay for their own um, health which is obviously heavily subsidised whereas veterinary care isn't um, and I think clients get very um, there's, a, there's a whole lot of um, shame involved with not having the money to pay for veterinary care mm. um, and, and that comes um, as a result of, of generally almost all pet owners want to be seen as good pet parents and, and probably are really good pet parents um, and possibly uh, feeling a little bit judged and, and ashamed that they can't afford to pay the care and so I think that creates a whole lot of emotions that um, that come out um, when we start to have those conversations if we're not careful about how they're had. Yeah, absolutely. So does pet insurance make any difference to that conversation? Yeah, about money? pet insurance makes a massive difference because I think you know, when we're deciding what treatment path to take with our pets, um, we're often making that decision based on what the owner can afford to do. Mm. So for example, are we treating that patient as an outpatient and, and use, you know, so for example, the vomiting dog, are we treating that um, patient as an, an outpatient and doing some anti-nausea and some electrolytes and some supportive care because they can't afford, um, you know, bloods and x-rays and what have you to rule out for on body or whatever. And so, if uh, they're trying to decide that based on what money they've got then obviously they suddenly get very stressed and yeah. and that sort of activation of the hind brain and, and that stress response really um, impacts their ability to communicate well as well so i think if you've got pet insurance there and you know that that's the money side of things is going to be covered then we can suddenly start making decisions about what's actually best for that pet's yeah. health care which is enormously um, beneficial for the client but it's, it's has a huge impact on on our clinicians as well so yeah it absolutely does change how that conversation goes and it helps the animal as well it, yeah know, absolutely the outcome for yeah. Yeah. yeah so how would you recommend veterinarians tackle talking about money i think the most important thing is not to avoid it um, there's been some really good studies done where they've looked at how often clinicians actually bring up money and it's surprisingly low given that, that every client needs to pay for um, the care. So firstly we don't avoid talking about it and I think that's a really um, important thing to really practice. Have I talked about money? Um, and then secondly is to normalise the fact that it's hard to talk about money. So I'll often say something like one of the things a lot of people worry about when we start talking about treatment plans is how much it's going to cost. 
I'd like to just run through an estimate with you now so that you're aware of what's involved. Does that sound okay with you? So basically normalising the fact that a lot of people worry about money. Yep. Um, and the other thing that I will often say is um, it's my job not only to give you your, um, your options for treatment um, and talk about what, what we need to do to improve things for Minka, but it's also my job to make sure that I'm really clear about the costs that are involved as well, because it can be quite surprising for some people who haven't had their pets unwell mm. before. Mm. So I think just normalising that situation. The other thing I do is, particularly with hospitalised patients, is just making sure that it's a clear expectation that they're updated on costs daily, because that tends to be when things run. Yeah, um, accumulate. Uh, yeah, accumulate yeah. really quickly. And um, and so you, initially you give them that first estimate, it's going to be $650 to do this initial workup and get them on fluids and things or, or whatever it's going to be, and then they think that's what it's going to be. And unless they're updated daily, so I set that expectation right at the beginning. One of the really important things about making sure that we're successful in looking after Minka is to make sure you're well informed about the cost. So every day when we call you and give you an update on Minka's health, we're also going to give you an update on costs. Yeah. And so making sure that my veterinarians are doing that every day, and we've actually got a tick chart on that form to make sure that the owners have been updated twice a day on cost. So I think just really setting that expectation um, and, and doing that within your veterinary team as well so that everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Nothing worse than um, the case that's been admitted for surgery and the person who saw the patient before you hasn't mm. given the owner a clear expectation of costs because it's you who has to discharge the yeah. patient. Yeah, yeah, so really, really important. Yeah. So what about those clients, though, that will say to you, it doesn't matter what the cost is? Yeah, so I'll, I'll use that. It's my job to make sure that you're aware of it. Even yeah. if it doesn't matter to you, I have to make sure that I've given you an estimate of cost. Great. Yeah. Some great tips there. Thank you very much, Meg. You're very welcome.